Good evening, everybody. This is Prince of Peace Apostolic Church. Amen. We are glad to be here on tonight. This is the first Bible study of 2021. So we're really excited about being here on tonight. We got a new format for us this week. Uh, well, this month, this year, I should say. So again, we wanted to let everybody know Happy New Year. We're so glad, to, amen, to have you guys come on. So come on on. And as you come on, just make sure that you, um, you know, uh, acknowledge the fact that you're coming in by typing in praise the Lord, saying Happy New Year, do whatever you want to do to greet us tonight. So we just thank and praise God for everybody. Come on on on. So come on and let us know you're out here. I'm hoping I can see you guys out here tonight because I want to acknowledge you as you all are coming in. So let me see um, what I can do here. Let me see. All right, as you all are coming on, please say praise the Lord. So I think I see Brother Richard Hutzbeth. All right, bless you, man. Also, uh, Sister Davina, God bless you, dear. Happy New Year, happy New Year, yeah. So as you guys are coming on, we of course we ask everybody to uh, share on your pages if you can. I think it's going to be exciting tonight um, um, as we come on. So again, first ladies made it. God bless you. God bless you. As you're coming on, just type in there, praise the Lord or happy new year. Say something to us so we can acknowledge you on tonight. We want to do this a couple more minutes and then we're going to be right at it uh, because I do have a wonderful guest tonight that I can't wait to introduce to you all. So um, come on on and let us know you made it. All right. Again, again, we don't want to get started because we don't want y'all to miss none of this. This is ready to be off the chain. All right. All right. Sister Renona, God bless you. All right. And again, when you read, hear something or you read or see something that you really like, make sure that you hit the likes and the hearts um, because that lets us know that these certain things are resonating with you or blessing you. So, again, we just want you to make sure that you do that. Again, that keeps us encouraged. All right. So again, this is Prince of Peace Apostolic Church. We are located on 6848-50 South Cottage Grove Avenue in Chicago, Illinois. My name is Pastor Kermit DeLashman. And all, also, of course, our executive team consists of Senior Pastor John McCall, uh, Senior, as well as First Lady Michelle. And we are so excited to be here on tonight. So again, um, as you all are coming on, make sure that you all are uh, saying praise the Lord, type it in, let us know. Come on, let's be interactive tonight. Again, this is the new first Bible study of the new year, 2021. Again, we're looking for some exciting things on tonight. All right, so come on on, let us know you made it. Let me see, anybody else out here yet? All right, Sister Gabby made it. God bless you, Gabby. All right, all right, anybody else? Let us know you made it. Because I'm we're gonna have to move quick tonight because we got a lot going on tonight. So again, we want to kind of keep it at an hour. So we're gonna just want to, uh, you know, uh, do what we can. Again, this is this is a series that we're gonna probably be doing uh, probably about all month. So it's gonna be great. Hey, Amber, God bless you. All right, the Coopers made it. All right, Deke and Sister Cooper, God bless you all. And as you're all coming on, just type it in. So let's do this. Uh, I want to pray, and then we're going to go ahead and get started. So let's bow our heads. Don't bow your heads if you're driving. All right, so let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be out here on the night. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for, uh, man, giving us the ability to come over into a new year, God, which lets us know, God, that you still have purpose for us to fulfill. And God, we thank you for Lord Jesus. So as we are in our consecration, Lord Jesus, I'm asking that you strengthen every person, God, give them, amen, all that they need, Lord Jesus, to make it through, amen, and to be able to serve you well, represent you well. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for how you're going to visit us even on this month, how you're going to clarify things for us. So Lord Jesus, we ask that you meet us tonight in this study. Lord, we thank you for information. We ask that you anoint all of our hearers and watchers and listeners as well as those that are facilitating on tonight. God, let your presence be felt and we'll thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' name, amen. All right, all right, all right, all right. Am I missing anybody? Did I miss anybody that came on? Just say praise the Lord as you all are coming in. We're gonna try to acknowledge you all as you all are coming in. All right, so, all right, Sister Husband, God bless you, dear. All right, Sister Petrana, God bless you, God bless you. Oh, my friend, Sister Tina, God bless you. All right. All right, Sister Wilcoxon, God bless you, dear. Chris, hey, Chris. <laughs> I know Chris is here. Chris is our director. 
um, our producer and director. All right, so we thank God for her tonight. All right, so we're going to get right at it tonight, you all, because we've got a little bit of work to do tonight. And again, we've got a wonderful guest with us on tonight. We have the lovely, beautiful, my niece, um, the head of our culinary ministry at the church, also a entrepreneur of her in her own right, who has started her own business called Welcome Shayla's Kitchen. And we are so happy to have Shayla McCall with us on tonight. So I'm going to ask Shayla to go ahead and take a moment to greet everybody. And then we'll get into our presentation. Go ahead, Shay. All right. Hey, how y'all doing tonight? Um, this is going to be really fun. Don't be scared. Y'all can cook. I'm going to show you. And we're going to make this Daniel Fest go by like a breeze. I promise you. All right. All right. So we got Sister Shayla McCall joining us on tonight. And again, she's got everything looking so colorful and beautiful over there. Let me. So we're going to get right into the presentation uh, because I want to again, we're going to be talking about. Um, hey, Lynn. All right, Lynn out there. The, I'm in the shoes out there. Is that Deacon and Evangelist shoe? All right. Let me know. All right. Praise the Lord, everybody, as y'all coming in. All right. So. Uh, I'm going to get right at it. All right. Evangelist is out here. Evangelist Neil. God bless you, dear. All right. So I want to get right at it tonight. So tonight I would like to share with everyone what God, our king, has said about eating. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to we're going to talk about a few things tonight. We're going to talk about um, eating, what to eat, exploring the vegan versus meat debate. Um, I'm going to lift up some things in the scriptures and offer some helpful suggestions to help you while you are in consecration this month, all right? So we got a lot to do tonight. And of course, I can't wait to uh, have Sister Shayla join us in a moment. So, so it is important to note that when you are removing items from your diet, you must immediately replace them with the right things, okay? Or you will fall back into your original behaviors. Uh, so we don't want anybody to kind of, you know, uh, backslide, we should say, amen, from the commitment that you originally made. So it is also worth noting that your body will fight you. Yeah, I'm going to let you know that your body will fight you. And it's not really your body, it's actually your brain. All right. So because it is very aware of any pattern changes that you make. So understand your body is very, very uh, acclimated to what you do every day. You know how you have to stop by Starbucks every Sunday, uh, every morning on your way to work or how you have to have certain things to eat or, or snack on and all that. So your body is looking for those things. And again, your brain is programmed to say, all right, body, get ready. And, and we're going to talk about that hopefully uh, in probably week three. But just to kind of give you guys a precursor of what happens um, when you are on a specific specific schedule, your body, your brain tells your body. All right. Stomach. Start making acids because at 10 o'clock, um, Kermit's getting ready to eat probably the wrong food. <laughs> so start creating the acids to, you know, um, to get ready for that. So again, oh, all right. A pair of shoes. I like that. <laughs> I love it. All right. So so again, once you start changing the patterns up, um, it will. Um, hey, Sister Lynette, God bless you. Um, um, it will start to create um, some differences where your brain's going to be like, your stomach's going to send a signal back to your brain and say, hey, what are you doing? Um, you know, there's nothing down here. Kermit didn't put anything in here. So just, you got to get, your body has to get acclimated to whatever changes you're making. So remember those dendrites in your brain, don't forget anything. So get ready for some discomfort. Get ready for a little bit of a struggle because just like any deliverance that any of us experiences, it takes a made up mind. You got to persevere. All right. In order to stay delivered. All right. So we're going to, um, Chris is getting ready to lift up the screen for us um, so that we can get right in. Okay. So I want to talk about um, what does our King say about eating animals? Let's go right into it. All right. So again, we all know that our, um, as dominion, uh, as kingdom citizens, that we look everything, uh, we go back to Genesis 1 and 2 for most of the information that we are looking for. So, and the Bible says, and God said, let us make man, and that's Genesis 1, I believe 26, 
God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion. And he says who he has dominion over. Dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. All right? So um, the question I have today is when God gave man dominion, and you guys feel free to answer this. When God gave dominion over the animals, did that include killing them for food? I'm going to ask that again. When God gave dominion over the animals, did that include killing them for food? Yes. All right. So you guys can feel free to answer because I'm just going to go straight in. Because uh, like I said, we got a little bit to do tonight. So, so I think it's important that we understand what dominion means. I think that's important. Hey, cuz, how you doing? Um, it's important that we understand what dominion means. See, the Hebrew word for dominion is the word rada. And that makes reference to rule over. You should see it on the slide right there. Ruling over, to dominate, to subjugate, to tread down under one's feet. Okay. Um, and again, there is no mention of killing animals for specific or testing animals or for specific um, scientific experiments or for food, but I believe it would include that. All right, so let me explain why. Um, when you understand dominion means to have full and total control. Matter of fact, when you look at Rada, you actually see some words that are really kind of um, Aggressive. The words that you see um, in the on the slide, you'll see it says um, it says to have dominion, to rule, to subjugate, to tread down. So it almost gives a picture of conquering or, you know, um, subjecting a person to your will. Um, so it is leaving us with the impression that God never wanted us to be passive in relationship to how we function on the world, that we should be aggressive in our pursuits and how we do things. So again, so with that being said, if he gives me rulership or dominion over the plants, the animals and everything down here, if I choose then to um, kill them or use them for scientific experiments, guess what? I have that control to do so. I do have that control to do so, okay? So man is not in trouble because he's doing that, because he has full and total sovereignship over this realm. I thought I saw my friend, Pastor McCoy out there, and also my friend, Sister Susie Ram from God's Grace. God bless you all. Good to see y'all out here today. All right, so again, um, just wanted to make sure everybody understood that. So, and please understand that the question really is, is if we are to take full and total dominion, um, the question is, how are we executing that, even in our own lives? Have we taken full and total dominion over our lives? Um, or does somebody else control our life? Have we taken full and total dominion over our finances? Or has somebody else or something else taken that, taken dominion over that? Do we have full and total dominion over our families, over our children? Or do the children run the house? My God. Right? The question is, who's in control? God created all of us as kingdom citizens to be in control. All right? So does your job run you? Mm -hmm. Does your debt run you? Is everything out of in chaos in your home? Where you're not in control, you're reacting to everything that's going on. We have to get back in dominion control. So the last thing is, is your health under control? Have you taken dominion authority and executed dominion even in this regard? All right, so that's what we wanna to be tonight. And if we look at the word Radai in the context of the fallen state of man, we are looking at the definition outside of the character and the nature of God, all right? So remember, God is love. 
If God is love, then dominion must bear these characteristics as well. Especially if the instruction is given in Genesis 1 and 2, which is before the fall, remember? So, so if you all look at the slide, um, if you look at the slide, um, you'll see um, that Adam was given instructions to name every, um, every animal. So Genesis 2 says, and out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them under unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a man to help me for him. Again, a lot of this writing is small because <laughs> I'm trying to do two or three things at the same time. So again, so I wanted to make mention of the fact that um, that God gave Adam this responsibility to categorize species, which is huge. So every animal that God created, he brought him to, Ad, uh, brought him to Adam and said, hey, what do you think? Um, and again, so if Adam had any questions, he could ask and then they would categorize species that. So this is a, the, the cat fan, this cat species, which is the lions, the cheetahs, the panthers. Then you had your um, your primates, which was your orangutans, your chimpanzees, your gorillas. And so he had this wonderful opportunity to, to categorize all these species. And what we noticed that is that, that after that, um, after God creates them, he brought them to Adam. And it is evident in the garden that animals were not killed for consumption. Okay. And matter of fact, the first animal, the first animal death came after God kills an animal to make coats for Adam and Eve to clothe them. And that's where we find in Genesis 3 at the bottom left, it says unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin and he clothed them. All right. So, again, the first death of any animal occurs when God does that in relationship to the fall. All right. So um, on our next slide. Um, so the question is, what is God saying about eating animals? All right. Mm -hmm. So I do have a question up here. It says, did God give man instruction to kill animals for food? And no. believe it or not, you guys, um, the oh, answer yeah. is yes. He did. And that is in Genesis 9. OK. And then the, um, where you under the, the. Under where it says. Um, hold on a moment. Under where it says um, Bible contradictions. I want everybody to notice that it says um, it says everything that lives and moves about will be food for you. All right. Just as I gave you the green plants, I now give you everything. So this is God after the flood, okay? And I want to make sure everybody understands this. This is after the flood. Um, God opens up the ability for man now to eat more than just a plant-based diet, all right? I wanted to also lift up some research that I found out about that because I wanted to make sure everybody understands why he does that, all right? So, um, Matthew Henry, one of the most notable, um, the um, I would say theologian as well as commentators, he wrote this. A grant of, he said, Matthew Henry states, a grant of maintenance and subsistence. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, is what God says, right? Hitherto, most think man had been confined to feed only upon the products of the earth, fruits, herbs, and roots and all sorts of corn and milk. And even that milk was based off of either coconut or um, or almonds or nuts or something like that. So, so was this the first grant. So God basically said, this is your first thing that you're gonna eat, you're gonna eat right here. He says, but the flood having perhaps washed away much of the virtue of the earth and so rendered its fruits less pleasing and less nourishing, God now enlarged the grant and allowed man to eat flesh which perhaps man himself never thought of till now that God directed him to, nor had any more desire to eat um, the flesh than a sheep has to suck blood like a wolf. 
<laughs> That's some strong terminology, Brother Matthew. But now man is allowed to feed upon flesh as freely and safely as upon the green herbs. All right. So in his opinion, he's saying that God allowed man to eat flesh because the quality of the agricultural life may have been negatively impacted by the floodwaters that carry debris as well as dead bodies. Prior to this, it seemed that man was primarily vegetarian or vegan. All right. So if you look at the slide, you will also see that Jesus is also fixing a meal on the seashore for his disciples. And in John 21, 9 to 3, it says, as soon as they as as soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there and fish lay there on and bread. Jesus said unto them, bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to, la to, the, to land full of great fish, about 153. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Then according to the slide, Jesus said unto them, come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then cometh and take it bread and give it them and fish likewise. So again, you see here, so the question to, uh, um, was meat eaten in the New Testament amongst God's people? The answer is yes. Where Jesus definitely fed uh, his own disciples, all right? So in his opinion, God allowed man to eat flesh because the quality of the agricultural life may have been neg neg negatively impacted by these waters. So I wanted to make sure that even in the Old Testament accounts um, in Leviticus, um, you also see God's provision of quail. You remember that? Remember he, he rained down quail <laughs> and, uh, while the children of Israel were in the wilderness. Uh, and no doubt these people were exposed to other foods while in Egypt and could have acquired a different diet that included fowl and maybe fish. However, most records of ancient Africans show that they were all and completely vegetarian. So some historians believe that they could have served slaves foods that they themselves would not consume. Pretty much like how we got stuck with pig feet and chitlins and stuff like that here in America. All right. Because we got the leftovers of all the animals um, after Big Mama made all the food for master in the house. All right. So you've also got. In the New Testament account, um, I would also reference the account where Peter is presented with the vision. Y'all remember that uh, from heaven? And he calls the animals in, in that net unclean. All right. And that's where we actually get the Leviticus account that's on that slide of Bible contradictions, because because this was not necessarily re referencing to eating. This was more so a reference to the Gentiles because of. God was preparing Peter to assist the Gentiles who he was bringing um, salvation to. So again, the Eden account shows that God's original instructions for man was to be vegetarian. The law in Leviticus was to give instructions to God's people based upon the appetites that they had acquired after the fall. Remember, in the garden, Adam was internally governed and had access to God's instruction. Outside of the garden, Man is left to feed himself by trial and error. And once God delivers them out of Egypt, he now begins to instruct them on what to eat, referencing the foods that they were consuming. So God was basically telling them, you guys have been eating this, but you should not be eating this. You should not be eating animals with hooves. You should not be eating animals with fins and scales. You should not be eating them. And that's what Leviticus 11, 10 and 11, 11. Uh, seven through eight says, okay? So um, the account of Jesus feeding the disciples a meal that included animal flesh is considered an act of dominion. Stay with me on here, right? Which shows us that man has the ability to make his own decision about what he will eat. You don't get in trouble. You don't go to hell for that, okay? I wanna make sure everybody understand that. So as we discussed previously, God gives us the choice, right? He tells us to choose life choose death, choose blessing, choose cursing, right? I believe that's Deuteronomy 30. Um, so you have the ability to choose. You don't get in trouble, whatever choice you choose. All right, hey, Sister Linda, God bless you. I know some other people came out here too. So I wanted to make sure everybody understand that. So God gives us a choice. 
However, we as kingdom citizens should always look to Genesis 1 and 2 for our instruction because it is there we see God's original mind and his heart. Now we're going to get into some good stuff. Next slide down. I want everybody to see one of the study premises that I use is to look at Genesis 1 and 2, uh, the account in Genesis 1 and 2, through the eyes of science to see how man's scientific discoveries substantiates God's commandments to us, all right? So, and what I find a lot in the Bible um, is that God is always a king. <laughs> he is always a king. And kings do not consult with a Senate or a Congress before they make a decision. And whatever he sees is true is what he declares and decrees, and it immediately becomes law, okay? And this leaves us with a Bible or a constitution with instructions minus details, okay? You get commandments because I said so, right? So in Genesis 1 and 29, um, the Bible says, um, and God said, behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth and every tree. And then in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed and to you it shall be for meat. So anytime you see in the King James Version where it says it shall be for meat, it's basically saying it is for consumption or it is food for you, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, this is God's original commandment to Adam and it is in direct reference as to what he should eat. After this, this account right here or this commandment from God, you will not find any other references in the Eden account as to what Adam and Eve should eat. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Bible shows us also that our medicine is our food. That's what Ezekiel 47 and 12 and, and Revelations 22, one through two says. All right. And it says, and by the river, upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for meat or for consumption, right? Whose leaf shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months because their waters they issued out of, their, uh, out of the sanctuary and the fruit thereof shall be for consumption or food and the leaf thereof for medicine, all right? Revelations 22, one through two, I'm just gonna go right to the end and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Now, anybody that, that is really in the health and nutrition, they will notice that right underneath that, that portion where we have those two scriptures written, you have something that says, is it not true that it says in the Bible, in Genesis, Ezekiel, and Revelation, that the herbs are for healing? The healing of the nations, and it was, and that was um, a a very common statement made by the one and only Doctor Sebi, who has gone on to be with the Lord. But he is a, a person that I follow. Um, I lot follow a lot of his his work because he is the only person that has successfully healed people from cancer, um, lupus, um, man, even um, blindness all kinds of uh, illnesses, lupus, um, I know he said lupus, AIDS, um, all kinds of diseases by holistic medicine, okay? So I follow him closely, all right? So, so the Bible shows us our medicine is in our food. All right, so I wanna make sure everybody gets this, that there is an interconnectedness to all life. All right. And that's why the scripture says in Genesis 2, I mean, 8, 22, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. So the earth is on a perpetual cycle to continue to exist. All right. And so are we. All right. So there is an interconnectedness to all life. If the earth is producing living plants full of minerals, water and oxygen, then God's instruction is to eat what you are made of. Mm. Eating meat is eating nutrition secondhanded. The cow eats plants. Chicken eats plants and seeds in order to grow. If we eat animals, we are eating nutrition secondhanded. 
All right. In today's times, we are also eating the torture, mistreatment and steroids that it is used to mass produce meat. Many of us have seen the slaughterhouses and how brutal and barbaric men treat these living creatures and the money they spent on farming animals for mass production runs in the billions. And I got a question for you all. What comes to mind when you read that man has dominion over the animals? When you when you read that, that man has dominion over the, uh, the creeping, crawling, flying, swimming animals, what 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 picture comes in your mind about what that means? Does that include slaughtering? Or brutally, you know, mistreating? Or does it give more of an impression that we are here to take care of them, to take care of the species that God placed on the planet? All right. Um, so that the, the ecological system of the, our, our world works, the jungle works the way it's supposed to. The oceanic kingdoms work the way they're supposed to. Even the, um, the, 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 the birds kingdoms work the way they're supposed to. So if if we take care of things, then, of course, those those kingdoms also get to work um, as well. So and I watched a, a documentary that explained that if humanity stopped eating meat, that the money that they saved um, could actually end starvation in the world. An industrial engineer was given the task of creating a world without homelessness without um, without um, starvation um, and, and and everything. And he was able to do that. And he said, this is all we would have to do. And one of the first things he said was, is that we would have to stop eating meat. <laughs> we would have to stop eating basically meat. So um, I think Chris is already on the slide. I need it. All right. So, so I want to move on and then I'm going to bring uh, Sister Shayla in. Uh, so Shay, get ready. <laughs> all right. So all right, so I wanted to let's lift up that man is a living soul. The Bible says, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul, which is in Genesis 2 and 7. And so scientists have said that with the regenerative propensities of the human body, it was built to live forever. Mm. That the body actually recreates itself. So how does your body rebuild itself in less than 365 days? Man, look, so I, I had to include this slide. So your DNA renews itself every two months. Your skin rebuilds itself every month or every 30 to 35 days. Your blood renews itself every four months. Your brain rebuilds itself every year. Your liver rebuilds itself every six weeks. The lining in your stomach rebuilds itself every five days. The bones builds, the, the body builds, builds a whole new skeleton, what? In three months. Wait a minute, let, 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 I, got, I, gotta, I gotta say this, y'all gotta talk to me about this because this is about to be crazy. Because um, I gotta ask you this. If the body is built to recreate itself, all of the people who say I was born like this, does that hold any water now? I was born this way. Whatever way you say that is, if that's true, and the body has the ability to recreate itself, and I'm talking about the brain gets to recreate itself, the skeleton recreates itself, the liver, the blood, Every part of your being gets to recreate itself within a 365 day time frame. And a lot of this is a lot sooner. It's on a different cycle altogether. How can you hold anything and say, well, I was just made like this. or I was created this way. Hmm? Woo. All right. So, again, if the body has the ability to create, recreate itself on whatever cycle those particular organs are. I just want to say, Dr. Sebi says this, and this is very powerful to me. He says that living creatures must eat foods that are alive in order to keep living. We are all living creatures so that the food we eat must also be alive. 
This speaks to why the commandment from our king is to eat from every tree in which the in which the fruit or herb produces seeds. Anytime you got fruit and vegetables and different things like that, and they have their own seeds, you know you have a live plant that has the ability to recreate itself, right? So seedless fruit has been modified and does not carry as much nutrition. And they do that for convenience. But the truth is what they've done is injected those uh, watermelons and things like that um, with some kind of steroid or something that, yeah. right, just so that people don't have to pick through them. They can just go straight to eating them. That's not as nutritious as a, a watermelon with its own seeds, all right? So try to always look for produce that has its own original seeds. All right. All right. So I want to bring my, my friend in. Shayla, are you ready, dear? I got to bring my girl in. There she is. All right. So, so this is what I want to do. I want to I want you first to, um, to tell us what do you have there that looks so awesome? Oh, let me tell you what I am. <laughs> We're going to create this and notice all the colors. Colors are important, people. So this is pretty much a burrito bowl. You don't have to go to Chipotle. And because you're on the Daniel Fast, I thought this was a cool way to get you all pumped about the burrito bowl and oh, eating oh. from the earth. It's not as bad as you think. All right. So, um, as you can see here on my cutting board, we have peppers and onions in my pan. I have just some olive oil. Um, another good oil to use is grapeseed oil. I really like that one. Um, we're going to saute these up real quick. And then I'm going to give you some seasonings to have in your cabinet to get through this fast. So, and I bought these at Walmart. One is from Trader Joe's, okay? So this is ground cumin. We're going to use that tonight. We got garlic powder, Himalayan pink salt. I prefer this over table salt. And then this is my, this just spent a little money, y'all. It's not that expensive, but this is from Trader Joe's and it's extremely delicious. It adds a little spice to your food. You can put it on fruit as well and it'll be really, really good. Okay. What was that, Shayla? It is a chili and lime seasoning. Okay. And it's right at Trader Joe's. And I think it, it's not over $5, so you'll be fine. Like, not bad at all. So, um, and speaking of money, I just would like to throw this out there. Um, a lot of times we complain about spending money on healthy food. But if you really think twice, an extra $6 today will prevent you from spending $60 a month on your medicine. Just something to think about. Great point. All right. All right. We're going to throw these in the pan and let those start to saute. And then you just sprinkle. You got your cumin, your garlic powder. Hey, Chris, can you shrink me a little bit so you can make her bigger? Because that looks great. And your chili and lime seasoning. And you're just going to let that saute. Now, in this pan back here, we're going to put the black beans on. I did make a um, list of everything and what it does for your body. So I know a lot of people say they don't like beans. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people need to realize beans are good for your liver. And they also help um, with getting a lot of fiber in your system. And because of those two things, it's also very good for beating cancer. So just think twice. And since you can't have meat, you better get some beans. It's hearty. So just going to take a little. Saute it up real good. Now, All right, now, Shayla, how long should you cook any vegetables or like spinach or anything like that on the stove? Like when you're sauteing, because some people cook their food until the colors change. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. So, so um, I like to saute my vegetables for no more than three minutes, sometimes five. Um, the way you know you did right by a, a cooked vegetable is there should still be a crunch. So most vegetables have a crunchy texture. Um, and if you cannot crunch into it a little bit, you cook all the nutrients out of it, honestly. Right. And, and that, that was what I heard before that you have to, you know, if you cook it where you cook the um, you've cooked it, cooked it till it changed colors, then you basically um, cook the life out of it. Yes. Listen, I'll be on Facebook, Pastor, and mm -hmm. if the whole plate when you post your food, if the whole plate is brown and dark green, um, you defeated the purpose. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're working on right there that's so avocado. I, that's about saying we're gonna make some homemade guac um i would suggest making homemade during the daniel fast because store-bought guac they definitely have sugars possibly in them and other preservatives that technically we don't need and it literally takes this is like a five minute task it won't take all day and it's not hard to make it all. All right. So while that's sauteing, you're making a guacamole. Mm -hmm. And we're going to put some cilantro, fresh cilantro. I'm going to dice it up real good while I'm here. Got my lime. Squeeze your lime juice in here. Need a little acidity. It helps for digestion. Do you have a preference for limes um, over lemon? Um, I would suggest lime first. I'm going to tell you why. Lime is actually alkaline. And that is what everybody really needs. Um, and limes are actually the original fruit. The lemon got here later on. It's still good as far as acidity goes. But um, if you're really into health and you're trying to be holistic, lime, lime, lime every time. Gotcha. Okay, so we're going to sit the peppers over here because they are done. In the beans, I added a little garlic powder, you know, add a little flavor, ain't going to hurt you. And I love garlic, so we're also going to add fresh minced garlic. Um, you can buy this at Jules Aldi Save Light, every grocery store near you. So. <laughs> okay. Just a little bit of garlic in the beans. And we're just going to bring those to a boil. You still want your beans to be firm as well. Um, not, not hard, but firm. You need texture. Texture is the key to everything. So for the guacamole, we have the avocado in here. I added a little garlic powder. We're going to get some cilantro and... I'm going to tell you a little secret. The stem, I still have it on my cilantro. Keep your stems, people. It's good for you. That's where all the nutrients are. So you cut the, the stems up with the leaves. Yes, and you won't know it. Um, a lot of people, they probably see it all the time. Because once you chop it up real fine, you're not going to be able to bite into the stem. You wouldn't have a clue. All right. But that is where all the nutrients are. That's the part that was in the ground. So, right. The cilantro, you got your fresh squeezed of lime. Then just use your strong arm. Not the weak arm. Not your weak arm. Use your strong arm. <laughs> so you can get a nice, smooth texture. And literally, guys, we are almost done here. Y'all won't believe it. So, I'm into chunky food. Um, I suggest you all do the same, especially during the Daniel fast, since eating is mental a lot of times. So, I left my guacamole. It has nice chunks of elbow in there. Okay. All so, right. Hey, now before you all came on, 
I did some, I made some brown rice. So, um, portion wise, a cup of brown rice is good for any one individual. You really don't even need a whole cup. Four ounces is the suggested amount. So you just want to do your cup of brown rice here. More veggies, people. <laughs> I'm going to put some spinach. Right. Oh, you going to dress it up? Yeah, I'm going to make it cute because y'all can do it too. And I'll get your spinach <laughs> right there. All right. And then get your black beans. Put it on top real nice. Yes. Now, remember, y'all might not like beans, but beans have become your meat during this fast. So I would suggest <laughs> don't be shocked. All right. Now, we're gonna get our peppers and just slap that right on top. And I wouldn't be afraid, use as many as vegetables. So, you know, you can't go too far to be honest. So dressing it up really nice. And they're right on top. Yeah. Add your guacamole there. And then if y'all have been guests and they, they're scared of the Daniel fans, you know, just make it cute and then put a little, a little doop on top, you know, look cutely. <laughs> and there you have it. A burrito bowl for your Daniel fans. Wonderful. Oh my God. So did you want to talk about some of the propensities for, um, uh, well, some of the um, characteristics of the foods that you have? Um, or did you want me to, uh, did you want me to do those for you? Um, I know I did some notes. I do want to say this, um, that I know out the top of my head, cause I took notes for you guys. Cause I like you all. So <laughs> I can tell you, like I said about the beans, the beans are good for fiber. Mm -hmm. for your liver peppers during your fast i would suggest use peppers every day every single day it helps with digestion and i know a lot of you all don't know this but it also helps with respiratory health so we are in the pandemic right now we know that this sickness attacks your respiratory system the main pepper um, to use would be red peppers. So if you make a chili, make anything, just throw peppers in there. That way your body is ready for a fight. And then pass it right. take over from there. So let me just say real quick, I want to make reference because I have your notes up. So it, she says black beans, and I want to go down. Black beans helps to lower blood pressure, fights against heart disease, and has a mineral known as selenium that helps the liver detox and prevent chance of cancer, all right? Your bell peppers have vitamin C and plenty of fiber. Um, did you want me to do some more, Shay? Um, you don't have to because actually all of them kind of do the same thing. I think there is one on there that lowers blood sugar though. I don't know which. Um, cilantro be. is improves sleep, lowers blood sugar, and helps with digestion. Yes. So that's just the, I know people say they don't like cilantro a lot of times, but we're trying to stay alive at this point. <laughs> so <laughs> right. let's get with it. Okay. Right. And um, another thing I did want to mention about eating right. Um, just remember, everybody, that when you do tell your body we're getting ready to do something different, it gets mad at you. So you're going to have headaches. You might have stomach aches, nausea. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing that would happen once you change your diet back over. It's just your body's trying to figure out what are we doing. So please stick to it. And also another fact is some things might not taste like you expected them to. Just understand that society introduced us to man-made flavoring. So if you bite a blueberry and you're like, mm -hmm, this don't taste right. No, it tastes right. What you've been eating doesn't taste right. So just keep <laughs> up here. Okay. Well, listen, I want to say this, that um, I know um, 
avocado um, in and of itself is supposed to be used as a, a replacement for mayonnaise or mm-hmm. miracle whips or your salad dressings. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's a much healthier um, organic item that God has given us um, himself that we could use that in place of the artificial stuff that uh, man has made. And of course, it's not as good for us. So yeah. any other things like that that you want to add real quick before we before I wrap this up? Um, oh, another note, people, uh, while we're doing this fast, don't buy lettuce. Lettuce is pointless. <laughs> I hate to break everybody's heart. When you want to do a salad, um, I usually buy, you can find it at the store. It says mixed greens, mixed field greens. And that's like all the different greens, kale, spinach, um, arugula, get something with nutrients in it. If you're eating lettuce and making salads and making Caesar salad during the day you fast, you may not see <laughs> any results. And just so you know, Caesar dressing has anchovies in it. So it's really not at all vegan or vegetarian. So just keep that in mind as well, people. Okay. Oh my God. It was awesome. Thank you so much, Shay. Yeah. Um, we want to go to the immortality uh, slide, Chris. So I want to get to, um, I just want to lift up a couple of things before we even get into that. I just want to tell everybody, thank you all for joining us tonight. And again, we are doing some housekeeping right here. So we just want to let everybody know, again, we are um, asking everybody that can, amen, to, um, that is being blessed by the Bible studies that we are able to present, that if the Lord lays it on your heart to sow with us, please do so. Again, any amount of money that you share with us, I mean, goes directly into kingdom building. Um, and, and if anybody did not know, we are in the middle of a huge uh, restoration project at our church. Um, and again, so any monies that you guys can, uh, you know, share would be a blessing. And again, please understand you're not giving the pastor, you're not giving the senior pastor or first lady or even to the church. We sow unto the king. And when we sow to the king, the, of course, the king, of course, amen, allows us to reap the benefits of what we've sown. So we just thank God. So you can see we've got um, Cash App, Givelify. You can mail it in or go right to our website. And I believe it's a PayPal um, link there for you. So anything that you choose to give, $5, $5 million, we'll take it and amen, apply to the kingdom. Amen. All right. So want to do that as well is that when we when we get off of here tonight, we want everybody that can to join us on Zoom. Um, just type in that number, 872-204-7511. Just type the word Zoom in there. Hey, Amen. you will get a link so that you can come out and we can see your lovely faces this year. All right. So, again, this is our first Bible study of the new year. We would love to see your faces out there. All right. So, Chris, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. All right. So um, I just want to say that when you look at the fact that um, when we are in immortality, um, so when you eat plants, you eat the sunlight. You eat the rain, you eat the nutrients, you eat the earth, you eat the exotic and you eat the love. All right. Uh, So so no wonder plants give you life. That's what the slide says. So remember this. God made the body to heal itself. Holistic medicine doctors will confirm that the more we eat plant based, the better opportunity we are giving ourselves to nourish the body with what it is made of. Okay. And we have to always remember that the cells within our bodies need the elements from the earth and sun in order to recreate itself correctly. This is a huge reason why when you look at ancient cultures um, that they they said that they were worship the sun. Well, you know, me and me and Lady Michelle, whenever we would go to the islands, the Lord would bless us to go to the islands, whatever skin blemishes we had, whatever issues we had. When we got down in that tropical sun, it immediately became a healing agent for us. So I can understand why they did it, because we are so interconnected into a man, nature and, and the planet that we must start to embrace more of eating from. It, all right. So God has placed this is from Dr. Fokker, Jockers, who says God has placed tremendous self-healing mechanisms in the body. He says, therefore, it is not the physician, the surgeon, the prescription drug, or even the nutrient that cures. They act only in support or detriment to the body's God-given ability to heal itself. 
Many of the artificial foods we consume break the laws of nature and therefore clog up and create unhealthy conditions in our body. Remember, over 80%, y'all, of the food sold in grocery stores today did not exist when our grandparents and great-grandparents fed their families. All right? So a lot of the food we eat isn't even nutritious and therefore should not be even called food. When you think about it, anything that's in the aisles, that's boxed, um, canned, or jarred, or preserved or frozen or different things like that, they have added additional preservatives into it so that it could last longer. And when they add anything in there, it is something that's man-made. And so now you are adding things to what God gave us and that stuff that you're adding will start to cake up in your system, amen, and begin to break laws in at the cellular level. So we just wanna make sure everybody understands that eating more organic is better for you, all right? So the next slide says, notice, you are what you eat. I think this visual is, is big all by itself. So the question is, are you eating life or are you eating death? Is your refrigerator a morgue or is it a garden? All right, and during the Daniel fast, we should be looking more like a garden than we are a morgue, okay? All right, so um, we're going to move on. I want to, because we're getting ready to wrap up right here. We're right at the 7 o'clock hour. So I want to, um, Chris, the next slide, I just want everybody have to have some suggestions for success, all right? So again, we are starting our morning with prayer and Bible or devotional reading from the hours of 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. Remember you all, prayer is not asking, it is petitioning, ooh. So again, we are not, you don't have to ask for your rights uh, when you go to court. All you have to do is say, listen, this is where, this is where my rights were violated. So therefore, Lord, I'm asking you to restore my rights as a citizen in the kingdom, right? So again, you want to always exercise, do some sit-ups, push-ups, squats, get, walk, get out of the house, go walking so you can get some level of motion going on. Amen. Because that's going to help, um, the, uh, help the food metabolize in your system. All right. And again, here's the, here's the big one. No fast food, period, with the T. Y'all see I put the T on there. No fast food, <laughs> period. All right. Avoid all foods that have a commercial. They are manipulating you. All right. So, again, you never see a, a commercial for, um, you know, uh, for oranges or for apples or for grapes or for watermelon. You always see it for some concoction that somebody made because they're trying to make money off of you. All right. So, again, avoid all foods that have a commercial. All right, no eating or drinking. We're, this is a, a, a suggestion, no eating or drinking before noon. And for some people that are on medicine, of course, we are asking to make sure that you follow your um, treatment plan given to you by your doctor. If your doctor said you need to eat with your pills that you need to take at seven o'clock, eight o'clock in the morning, please follow that, okay? We are not asking you to deviate from that, all right? So we're asking everybody to don't eat or drink anything before noon. And the reason for that is it is giving your body longer times to metabolize, okay? The moment that you introduce anything to your system, it starts the acids from, from flowing. And now your body is, now it automatically stops that metabolizing and it goes into, okay, I gotta, I gotta get ready to break down food, okay? So you wanna drink lots of water and herbal teas. So I got some herbal teas here that me and Lady Michelle are working with. Um, and um, these have been a blessing. So I want to show them to you real quick. And uh, herbal teas, of course, are teas that have um, nutritional con content in them, folks. So here is one with, can y'all see this? Turmeric and Moringa, right? Then we've got one that has turmeric and 
ashwagandha, right? Here's another one that came with it, turmeric and spiced. I'm not sure exactly what all that is in there, but it came with the box. And also turmeric and ginger. All right, so again, all of these have medicinal properties to them. And what we want to do, I want to, uh, next week or so, we're going to get into the medicinal properties um, for these, these uh, for all of the herbs. So you'll know exactly what you're getting. So um, also we wanna break your daily routine up as much as possible. Remember, you've got dendrites that are already on a certain schedule and pattern. So breaking up your daily routine will help break some of that up, some of those patterns up, so it'll keep your body on alert, all right? And the other thing, uh, the other thing I wanna add here is only sweeteners, um, we're only using sweeteners that are within the fruit and the agave syrups. OK, so again, um, there was a recommendation for those of you that do have apple cider vinegar. All right. Because we're going to be eating a lot of fruits um, during this Daniel fast. We want to wash the pesticides off the fruit. And what they recommend is that you fill the sink with water. Add one cup of apple cider vinegar and stir it. All right. And you do that before you put your fruits in. And then you want to add all your fruits. So you can add your apples in with your strawberries and whatever else you're going to put in there. Add all your fruit and let it soak for about 10 minutes. The water is going to get dirty, but the fruit is going to be beautiful, shiny and clean. All right. So we definitely want to do that if you can do that. So get you some apple slice, uh, cider vinegar. Um, and our very last slide we want to get to is our refrigerator necessities. All right, and again, remember I said in the very beginning, I wanted to make sure that everybody, when you when you remove things from your diet, it's important that you add things to it. So, you know, to replace what you have removed, otherwise you'll just default back into your old behaviors, okay? So here's the thing, go to the produce section of your local grocery store and pick up the following. You want to get your fruits, you want to get your bananas, your oranges, your apples, your grapes, your pineapple, your melons, your mango, key lime. You want to get dates. You want to get figs. You want to get blueberries, blackberries, all right, elderberry. If you can get some, if if you go, I know Whole Foods has that. Um, you want to definitely, those are your fruits you want to make sure you get. You want to get your nuts. You want to get your almonds. You want to get your walnuts, your pecans, your, your cashews, um, and whatever other nuts that you guys may want to get into. I wouldn't recommend peanuts, though. I don't recommend peanuts, um, but all the other nuts are fine. Um, your veggies, you want to get your vegetables. So you want to get your kale. You want to get your spinach. You want to get Swiss chard. You want to get collards. You want to get dandelion. You want to get your salad mixes. This is Shayla Jess talked about those. So you want to get greens that have uh, nutritional properties to them. OK, so kale is the highest, um, highest nutrition enriched green that you can have. It is one of the best things that God gave us on the planet. And again, it is one of the things that it will bless your body the more you eat it. All right. You want to get to your grains and your roots. You want to get your Kenya, your your chickpeas. You want to get your ginger, turmeric and wild rice. Um, you can use brown rices, but the best rice to use is wild rice. OK, um, you want herbal teas or ones I just showed you, which is turmeric, moringa, chlorella. Um, you will also want to use almond milk as opposed to regular cow milk. As Brother Levi, my grandson, says, you want to use on the nut milks or the almond milks, um, date sugar. If you're going to use the sugar at all, you want to use date sugar as opposed to any white um, bleached sugars, um, agave syrup instead of honey. You want to use that. And also you want to use sea moss. We're going to talk about sea moss in a big way. Matter of fact, um, I have some sea moss right here. So I do have a supplier of sea moss, and this is um, the blessing about sea moss is this: 
is that your body is made up of um, 102 minerals. Sea moss by itself has 92 of them. 92 of them. All right. So um, normally what me and Lady Michelle do is we buy um, the concoction that um, has burdock root and bladder rack in it. All right. And with that, um, the blessing is, is that it has now all 102. OK, so sea moss is a godsend. All right. So please know that uh, me and Lady Michelle do have a supplier. So if you guys want some or can need some, we can get it for you. So we just want you. We just need to know because it goes quick. So we just want to let you all know um, that it is available. So um, and normally a bottle like this will cost you about 30 bucks. All right. And all you need is about a tablespoon of this a day and and you can go on with your life. So. Uh, again, these are um, some of the things that we're asking everybody to have in their refrigerator. So the question is, does your refrigerator look like a morgue or does it look like a garden? All right. Is it death or is it life? Right. So, again, we are living creatures. We want to make sure that we continue to live by consuming life. All right. So, again, we hope and pray that tonight was a blessing to you is a little bit different format than we normally use. And again, we are so grateful and thankful. Amen. Um, for everybody um, joining us on tonight, we are so grateful to have a man, um, Shayla from Shayla's Kitchen Amen. with us, who is a blessing to the, the Prince of Peace Amazon Church um, ministry, our culinary ministry in our church. So she she's the one that keeps us healthy, keeps us fed. So we are just thanking and praising God. Amen. That we've got young people in our in our church, man, that are, are working for the Lord and understand that kingdom um, authority um, automatically requires responsibility. Amen. And so I'm grateful that um, she's finding out at 30 what I'm finding out at almost 50. So I mean, it's a blessing. Y'all get y'all get to all the benefits of this a lot sooner. So that was blessing. So again, y'all show y'all love to Shayla. Let her know. Listen, she's going to be back every Tuesday, I believe, as the Lord says, the same um, over the next month. So it's going to be awesome. She's going to be making wonderful meals for us. And again, um, so definitely send us some feedback. Let us know. Again, come out to Zoom, 872-204-7511. We'd love to see you guys out there. And again, we pray that it was a blessing. So let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your insight and your heart, God, and Lord Jesus. And, and as we embark upon our wellness journey, God, we're asking, Lord Jesus, that you lead us and guide us into all truth. Lord, show us what your word says. Show us, Lord Jesus, what we should be doing, God, so that we can start to replace things in our cabinets, in our refrigerators, God, and put the things in there that you gave us from the planet, Lord Jesus, that would bring and produce life in us, God. We want to have healthy bodies, God, so that we can present these bodies as living sacrifices to you, holy and acceptable unto you, which is your reasonable, which is our reasonable service. And God, we just thank and praise you, God, because you are giving us this information at this time so that we could be a blessing not only to our lives, but to our families and to each other. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for such a shayla, God. We ask that you would bless and continue to touch her, God, and bless her business, God, so that she can blow up, amen, and be and, and represent you well as she did on tonight. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the Prince of Peace family and everybody that joined us on tonight, God, and we ask that your choice blessings rest on everyone, God. And Lord, we ask, until we meet again, we're asking, Lord Jesus, that your favor and your blessing, Lord Jesus, continue to be with us. And Lord, and as we embark on this new year, God, we're asking that you be with us, God. Be God with us. Don't just be with us. Be God with us. And we'll thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all come and hang out with me on Zoom, okay? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Hang out with me on Zoom real quick. 872-204-7511. Again, just type Zoom in there and come and join us, all right? It'll be great to see y'all. Love y'all. It's so good to see our God's Grace family, everybody that's joining, my cousins. God bless you all. I see you all out there. Some old friends I haven't seen in years. I see y'all. I see y'all. All right. God bless you all. We'll see you in a minute.